Good morning, Nimitz Association. Uh, hi, I'm Captain Kevin Crash Lennox, the CEO of the Nimitz. And uh, over my shoulder, we are getting ready for another day of flight operations here in the Arabian Gulf, loading bombs, positioning planes, and getting ready, getting ready to send them up into Iraq and Syria. But uh, it has been a long journey to get here. At this time last year, and I think uh, about this time last year was when Captain Ring spoke to y'all, but uh, this ship was pier side uh, in Bremerton, Washington, finishing up a 22 month long uh, maintenance availability. So once they uh, were done in August, they had to do crew certification, had to do their post operations reactor safeguard exam, and uh, get the ship ready to get underway, which finally happened in early October. The ship got underway and headed out for what you probably remember uh, during Tista FEP as a lot of GQs, a lot of fire drills, a lot of flight deck certification, ATG coming out and putting you through the ringer. Uh, normally that takes about 180 days. This ship knocked it out in 55 days. Uh, so a lot of hard, hard work by the crew to make that happen. And uh, once the ship was certified as safe to operate by itself, they came home for Christmas. Uh, and then when we came back from the holidays, that's when I took over back on January 12th. And uh, it has been a sprint ever since then. So right after the change of command, we got underway, headed down to San Diego and did our in-serve inspection. Uh, and some of you may have done that before too. About 300 uh, stone cold mean master chiefs come on board, put the whole ship uh, under a microscope and do a detailed inspection. I was a little worried with a 42 year old warship uh, and all these guys checking our material condition. But the inspector said that we know how to put the sparkle on the shine and said this 42 year old warship is ready to go for another 42 years. Uh, so with that big success, uh, we headed back out and we did our final exam to get ready for cruise. You guys probably remember that too, Comprehensive Training Unit Exercise or uh, Comp 2X. <clears throat> and uh, this one was different than the ones I've done really since I threw back to the one I did back in 1993. So a lot of MCON, a lot of flying around with, uh, with our radios off, with our radars off, uh, steaming around in formations and making sure that the submarines couldn't get to us. Uh, but we pushed through that very challenging exercise. We got the flight deck certified for blue water operations. Uh, and with uh, that success behind us, we headed home to Bremerton for a month of Palm. Uh, and then on June 1st, we got underway for this scheduled six month deployment, which has already been extended by nine days. But uh, uh, we headed down to San Diego. One of the highlights of the early part of cruise uh, was the Battle of Midway 75th anniversary celebration. Uh, so we were getting underway from uh, Pier Kilo right there on North Island, manning the rails. We had just loaded the air wing on board. And across the bay, about a half mile away, was USS Midway. Uh, Admiral Swift, the pack fleet commander, was there doing a ceremony with a bunch of the survivors. And uh, we were the backdrop for that uh, ceremony, uh, getting underway, heading out on deployment, continuing their legacy of service and continuing your legacy of service. Uh, so from San Diego, we headed across uh, the Pacific to Hawaii. Uh, where we did a USW exercise, a uh, standard one where there's a box in the ocean. We jump in there, two other submarines go in there with us for three days and it's just a steel cage match. Uh, very successful for us. We did three days of flight ops, killed the submarines a bunch of times and uh, they didn't get a shot off on us. Gave the crew a lot of confidence, gave the ship a lot of confidence as we headed out uh, into the South China Sea where we have a lot of adversaries who have some submarine capabilities. But uh, from Hawaii, we headed over to Guam we did a, so a couple days of bombing operations on the Farallon de Medini uh, range there, getting our claws sharp, getting the, uh, the air wing uh, ready to do operations in 5th Fleet. Uh, so once we finished on Guam, we pressed to the west, through the Philippines, through the San Bernardino Strait, across the Sulu Sea, Balabak Strait, Singapore Strait, uh, to our first port visit, which was Chennai, India. Now we have a very young, very idealistic crew and they were excited uh, to see a foreign culture and Chennai definitely provided that. I gotta be honest, that was not the best Liberty port I've ever been to, um, but it was an experience for the crew uh, for their first time going down onto the Camel, stepping onto a Liberty boat and uh, riding it into a foreign country where they could go in, get that check in the blocks, get Indian food, in India, something probably a lot of folks don't have on their uh, on their bucket list signed off. Uh, so with that Liberty port complete, we headed out and did exercise Malabar with the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force and the Indian Navy. Uh, a lot of cool stuff happened in there. Uh, right behind me, I watched a MiG-29 do a eye level pass right over our landing area, something uh, probably you wouldn't see back in the day. Uh, and then we wrapped that up with a big, uh, probably about 20 ship formation picture uh, with us, 
the, the Indian carrier and the Japanese helicopter carrier leading, the, leading a big formation with a big floor de lee at the end to, uh, to mark a successful exercise. So with our transit over, with all our exercises out of the way, we headed around the tip of India across some pretty high seas in the uh, Gulf of Oman, 12 foot seas. So uh, the crew got, got a little bit of uh, the rocking and rolling. Some of them turned a little green. Uh, but after that, through the Strait of Hormuz and up into the Arabian Gulf where we are today. We've been here about 30 days. In that 30 days, we've dropped about 300 pieces of ordnance. So we are definitely doing a lot of good work up here. Uh, we send three waves of jets up there every day. And, uh, we're dropping bombs in Mosul. We're dropping bombs uh, on the, the border with Syria. Uh, basically, we have driven ISIS out of Mosul and we are driving them uh, off the battlefield and into the shadows where they belong. Uh, so at this, uh, probably in about a week, it'll have been about 45 days at sea for us and we're gonna get to do a well-earned port visit in Bahrain. Crew's very excited about that. Uh, it has been a hard year. Um, it's gonna continue to be a lot of hard work out here in the Arabian heat. Uh, as you look outside right now on the flight deck, it's about 105 degrees temperature, but with the humidity, uh, about 130 degree heat index, we've seen 152 degrees heat index on the flight deck. Big challenge keeping the planes working, keeping the crews up there able to function in that kind of heat. And then down in the plant, uh, where a lot of you guys uh, have worked, we're seeing temperatures in the plant 120, 125 degrees, uh, and it's a challenge keeping the people able to function for a, a long period of time in there, but also keeping the machines working, keeping the ship cool. And uh, this crew has pulled together, learned how to do that really well, and we are succeeding out here in very trying conditions. Uh, so looking forward to another month, uh, a month or two out on the point here, and then we'll head for home, hopefully getting home right before Christmas. At that point, we'll have spent somewhere around 260 to 270 days at sea this year doing the nation's business just like you did back in the day. Uh, it's been an honor to, to serve the country. It's been an honor to be out here on the point doing what we're supposed to be doing with the Nimitz and with the Navy. And I appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity to share all that with you. And uh, please have a beer for me back there, at, uh, back there in Norfolk. Thanks a lot.